Damn it, Adam. Just why? Dogie, what are you doing? Stop it! Hey, Jamie, how's the garage sale going? You know, selling all your projects. Um, good. Well, what is this? 76 start. B5 blue. Hmm, nice wheels. What's that? Why does it say that? If you stand about this far back and cover that, this thing looks amazing. It is a little. It's a long walk to go back when you forget your keys. When I woke up this morning, the ground was dry. Thanks, Washington. What the heck is even this now? As returning viewers may be aware, I'm a big fan of Chrysler A-bodies. Especially B5 blue ones that say 340 on them. See? Big fan. My friend Tallboy over a cut rate counts himself among that group. And he sent me the link to this thing. The funny thing is, I already knew about it. A month or two ago, I sold a 727 core out of the defunct bathroom in the back of the engine shop to our local transmission rebuilders. They said it was for a dart. There it is, all shiny and new and painted up. Oh yeah, you had a flap of skin hanging off. Mechanicking is hard on your hands. Even before that, Multiple people had told me, hey, there's a dart next to the golf course on jack stands. Being in the strange and unique position I'm in, that is the local Dodge guy, word of these cars locally just kind of always makes it my way. Which brings us to yesterday. As you may be aware, I've been working pretty hard on selling things to make some room around here and gather funds to buy one really good car. Actually, I've sold quite a bit. That's sold, but it's still here. That's sold, but it's still here. Slant 6 truck went away yesterday. Why is this still here? All that really means is I have some money. So as soon as I saw the ad for this thing, the trailer was hooked up and I was on my way. Now, the knowledgeable Chrysler folk amongst my viewership, of which I know there are many, are probably already screaming, that's a 76. It definitely doesn't have a 340. Why does it have scoops? Well, you're right on one of those counts. My reading comprehension isn't necessarily the best, but I can pretty clearly make out the numbers 340 right there. Can you? And a quick glance in that direction right there will reveal this is a cast crank 340. Produced mid-late-ish 1972. In 1973, only. Also note, J-heads. Same as the originals off of my demon. Neat. Uh, the longer you look at this car, the more you realize something's off. For one thing, again, if you know these cars at all, that side marker is a clue. It should look like that, but uh, red. Also, the stripe is wrong. I'm guessing they didn't have quarter inch tape to mask the gaps. That's my little secret. What this is, is someone making what they wanted out of what they had. Clearly what they wanted was a 1970 Dart Swinger 340. And what they had was the undesirable beaky nosed 76 Swinger. I get the feeling it probably looks pretty good on camera. Um, it's not. And uh, glossing things over and making them look better than they are is not who I am as a person, so let's look a little closer. Why is there rust there? Why are there patches here? Why is there a matching patch over here that's been expertly hidden? Why is there a hole in the top of the fender? Why is uh, this? Why is uh, that? I'll tell you why. Canada. Yep, it all kinds of starts to make sense, doesn't it? So, unfortunately, this car is 
not what it appears to be, and it is quite uh, scabby in certain places. Mm hmm. However, it's pretty easy to just stand back and admire this car from a standpoint of redeeming qualities. Bucket seats, rare and expensive. Center console, which I thought belonged in here. There are remains of brackets on the floor, but it's also got a column shifter, so now I'm not so sure. Maybe they just did a halfway decent job. Beautiful American racing wheels. Incidentally, in big bolt and small bolt flavors because there's an eight and three quarter under there, guy. I'm pretty sure it's got a 3-2 open or worse, but it's there. Oh, yeah, and disc brakes. Heck, there's even a sway bar. In spite of this, um, it breaks poorly and it handles like a wet noodle. Truck radiator that doesn't fit right. Totally a move I'd make. RPM air gap. Also an Edelbrock, which looks almost new, but <sighs> it's bad. We'll get to that later. Brand new brake master and booster, which haven't helped at all. And of course, the aforementioned, at no small expense, rebuilt 727. It also has headers and dual exhaust, although since there's a hole ripped in the bottom of one of the headers, and well, these tips are very asymmetrical, I don't know if we can count that. All right, really, there are more unredeeming qualities. The trunk floor is made out of a sheet of galvanized steel and a spare tire well out of a copper car, all riveted together very poorly. And the door pins are so wallered out, the doors hang down, and did that. Lovely. Also, all the emblems are gone, for some reason. Oh good, more rain. This'll be fun. Maybe you can tell from here that the header needs some work. It's had a custom skid plate added, which I guarantee it needs. Unfortunately, there's a huge, horrible leak, so before I even start this thing, I'm gonna try and fix it with a welder crawling under the trailer. While it's raining, apparently. First things first though, put a grumpy six-year-old on a bus. Among all the redeeming qualities, there's one big reason I bought this car. Any guesses? I just noticed that quarter's rolled in. I should stop looking at it. I still had a replacement taillight for this three weeks ago and I shipped it to California. Why are things always like this? Oh no. My coffee cup. Before I get too far into this, I'd like to thank the Hoffmans from whom I bought this thing. Not only were they extremely honest, they gave me all the time in the world to look over the car and find every little thing wrong with it and make absolutely sure that I knew what I was getting. And they gave me a very fair deal. And I know they lost money on it. And uh, I am very appreciative. So thanks again. Let's have some fun. It actually has a nice stereo but it doesn't work. It also has an annoying line here that does work. Most other stuff, more of an idea. Ready to hear the saddest 340 noises of all time? Cold start. Why are Edelbrocks always like this? Oh yeah, wiper linkage bushing popped out. Gonna have to fix that if I want this to be my new, uh, Rainy day daily driver. For some reason, it really doesn't like coming in and out of park. Although, of course, now it works fine. Uh -huh. You. <laughs> Neutral safety works. Oh, yeah. The brakes are more of an idea. It's kind of terrifying, actually. Never knocked a bump stop off with the strap before. Well, there's the first time for everything. Am I a silly person? Yeah, probably. Oh, remind me to fix the world's most annoying noise. The difference in color is interesting. These are both B5 blue. This is kind of more what I always thought it should look like though. Hmm. All right, serious opinion time now. Do I put the scoops on or not? I'm leaning towards yes. They're right there. And they don't belong on this thing, but they do belong on that. They even say the right thing. Maybe that's a 72 thing. Mine says it down there. Mm, it's fine. You're really going to have to talk me out of this. Hmm. 
I wonder if they're originals. Sure looks like they were original uh, copper root beer brown. <sighs> Probably gonna have to pull one off and look for a part number. What do I mean a 72 thing? 71's the last year for these. <laughs> what do I know? I've become enlightened. That's a duster thing. Because, well, they didn't say 340. <sighs> ah, still pretty close. To answer your question, yes. There's a really good chance I bought a whole car just for a pair of foot scoops. Worth it. Ah, the body filler is strong with this one. The seller assured me this car does great burnouts. We'll test it in a bit. Why you leak stuff? Well, let's see what flavor of peppermint nightmare we got under here. Oh, hey, what's that? Hmm. Huh. Big old tranny cooler. Good move. Pay attention to that. That might be important. I thought that sounded like a brand new mini starter. I'm thinking this thing's as bad as it is because salt. Guy? Gaskets help. I could swear I had extra flange gaskets. Apparently not. Now, I don't know what you know about cheap headers and A-bodies, but uh, this is pretty normal. I mean, they turn into a skid plate anyway. Someone just went ahead and reinforced this one. There's a little spot they missed. I can weld that up, but uh, I'm thinking the flange gasket's the big thing, so might as well go get some. Floors are extra. Wait a second. Was this a drag car? Is that why they did such a crappy job? <laughs> Welcome to Washington. I'm Canada. Enjoy your stay. No gear ratio tag, of course. So this axle's definitely been apart, and I might even hazard a guess that they kept the good gears when they sold it. A common spot for us is here, where the upper control arms mount to the frame. Uh, as you can see, um, dirt gathers in there. Luckily, there are no holes in this one in that area. Yet! You know, I usually prefer to use a Red Bull can zip tied in place, but you know, that works. Oh, I'm guessing that's not factory weld wire. Huh, this thing looks a lot better if you step back and appreciate it as what it was built to be, a drag car. They put quarter panels on it and a stripe and they threw a decent paint job on it to make it look good from the stands. A drag car doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's Best of it isn't. You know, the sanctioning bodies involved might have something to say about structural rust, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, I have to at least try to straighten this. It's ridiculous. Ah. It's a no, gang. Why are things like they are? I smashed this finger now. I'm gonna cut off that gasket. She's a good one. Well, I guess we have no choice but to hop in my uh, reliable parts runner to go get a gasket. If the state of Washington is watching, no, I absolutely do not daily drive this car and I would never use it for normal day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, that works. I like this more. Before the last couple months, I'd never had a running 340 and now I have two. Hmm. Weird. But is it enough salsa? All right, I was just kidding on the gaskets. I've learned my lesson many times over on header flanges. I got the good ones. You ever have to burp and cough at the same time? But it's, uh, it's not pleasant. Oh yeah, my friends over at Bad Tree Productions sent me a care package of stickers. The demon's not the sticker kind of car, but you can live here forever on my matching race toolbox. Oh yeah, fully heathen certified. While I'm thinking about it, we gotta get the old Amvinsky's garage in here too. Unfortunately, I'm kind of out of space on the outside. Could go in the back, but that just seems wrong. What was I doing? Oh yeah. Why do I make such bad decisions all the time? I'd consider stopping, but well, I assume it's why all you guys are here. Well, what do we get now? Hey. hey. That ain't bad. More than a couple weeks up here, but we're moving in the direction anyway. Huh. You know, I was gonna weld up the little hole in the bottom, but 
sounds so decent now, I don't feel like it. So let's tune on it. Word of the wise, something I've seen many times. Your choke cannot run off of coil positive on a stock ignition system because the ignition power goes through a ballast resistor and the choke needs a full 12 volts. I'm gonna have to jumper that over to the correct side of the resistor and that should fix the chokey no worky good thing. Also, we'll just go ahead and full send that to race mode right away. Hey, uh, I just found something the demon really needs. That might go missing when we do the carb overhaul. Kick down linkage problems. The pin on the Edelbrock doesn't line up with the uh, factory four barrel position and this linkage never really works. This one's close, but uh, it's kind of adjusted wrong down there. So the pivot goes over center and it'll stick. You need to extend the linkage down below. You can see an extension was put in here to get it close to right. And it does work, kinda, until it sticks. We'll get it. It's all these little things that just add up to a car that doesn't work well. And tweaking all of them one by one adds up to a card that does. I almost can't believe it, but this thing still has a five pin computer. Dang it. Listen, I'm out about splices. I don't want to talk about it. You know, this exhaust leak now doesn't sound any worse than the Demon, really. I know absolutely nothing about what's in this engine, but I can tell it's got some party to it. Let's see if we can bring the party out. Another classic blunder. The vacuum advance was run to here. Goes over here, guys. You run it full time, when you hit the throttle, you lose that advance, you don't gain it. I have read there are certain applications in which you want that, but for our regular street driving purposes, that's what you need. Okay. Why does it sound so good now? Just stupid little stuff. Dude, listen to this thing. This is a good engine. Wow. Yeah, there's the difference between a grumpy hunk of barely drivable junk and a sweet running car. It's the little stuff. Here's how it starts now. Yep, that's a happy machine. A chorus of 340 noises. This is kind of my happy place. by the time I get back, the old gas smell is aired out somewhat. And hopefully all my stuff's still here. 76, full safety. Sometimes that even works. Also, what's all that? All right, well, the tune's definitely better on this than the Demon now. Wallet! Every time. I've learned. It's the front brakes that almost do nothing. And I guess they need blend. Also, there's a horrible rattle in the front end. That is all. It's not all. I need a bungee cord, too. Right? Until I get them flat. <laughs> well? Exactly, uh, 
you know, autocross machine or anything. This thing's got power steering though, and it really, really feels like a wet noodle. Also, the rear brakes lock up. It's bad. Need to bleed the fronts. Maybe say a prayer. Well, sometimes there's a tip. Sometimes it just gets with it. Also, there's a vibration. It could be worse. You're bad. Killing the birds. Also them. Jesus, what happened? Dude. <laughs> no one called the fire department. Everything's fine. <laughs> smells great. What is all this? It's my tire. This seems excessive. So weird. It smells like someone let a bunch of smoke out of my tires. I fix the wipers too. They don't really wipe so much as smudge, but they're there. How to tell a Chevy guy, put your Mopar together. Mm -hmm. Hey, treasures. Pretty much a work truck now. Hey, a factory jack. Too nice. You know, it was nice of them to put a real oil gauge in. But, uh, that only gives me bad news, so, yeah. Man, the dart just got the nod from a guy in a Geo Metro. I've pretty much arrived. Well, I guess that's all I have to say about that. For now. It's raining again, so... Can't really go test it very well. I'll probably keep fiddling with this thing and make it a nicer daily driver out of it. I definitely didn't need it, but I had to buy it. That's kind of how these things go. Gonna have to think long and hard about the scoops. Thanks for watching, and remember, reduce, reuse, recycle tires. Update! I broke it. It's all surgy and gutless and horrible. I don't know what I did. Yeah, this is uh, it's not good. Not good at all. <laughs>